working on a Lexus IS350. What I want to show you guys is the fact that we are working on the rear brakes here. Got the setup here. See how thin that brake pad is? These are shot, right? We're going to be changing out the rotors. Going to change out the calipers as well. The reason we're going to be doing that is this bottom bolt is actually seized. It's seized right there. All right? I'm sure I'm not the only one that's come across this. So on the top, you have a bolt that goes through, gets connected right there. Then you pop this out and this is, this slides up and down. All right now, if I can, I didn't take the pins out yet, so I can't get it back in. But let me see if I can get it up. Well, okay. As you can see it's not moving at all, right? I can't push it down and it won't go out. It's supposed to pop out that way. Let me show you on this one what it's supposed to do. So this new caliper I have right here, I actually already took out the bolt, which is right here. This bolt is this one right here. And you're supposed to be able to take this and have this slide all the way out. And that allows you to change, push the piston back and put in, put in the new brake pads. But what happens is this pin right here gets stuck. It gets seized right there, right there, right there. Okay. So instead of heating this thing up and beating it to death, I'm actually going to disconnect it from one bolt there, one bolt there. I think they're 12 millimeter, but I'll let you know right now. And then I'll be able to take this whole section off and change out this caliper because this thing is shot. Doesn't want to move, can't get it off, just a piece of junk. So I'll put links down in the description to this new caliper as well as the new rotors and new pads we're putting in. But I just want to show you guys if you run across this problem on a Lexus IS350, 250, I'll put all the vehicles that this covers down in the description below. But if you run into this problem, sometimes it's easier just to replace this caliper than just try to fight that thing. So we'll have to take off the um, brake hose, which is right here, and we'll bleed it once I get the new caliper on. But uh, yeah, I just want to share that with you guys if you run across this problem of a uh, rear stuck caliper on a Lexus. Working on this IS350, we're going to be changing out the rotor, the caliper, brake pads. I'm going to show you how to do that. First thing you need to do is get this wheel off. Got the jack under there. These are 21 millimeter lug nuts. So go ahead, let's take those off. I'll get the wheel off and I'll bring you back in. Got the wheel off. Here's a rotor. Here's a caliper. Got my jack stand in place. Never, ever just trust a jack. Um, when you work on a car, always put a jack stand. I have it back here on the back subframe. So next thing I'll do, I'll go in here. I'll take out the uh, old brake pads. Take this whole thing out. Take these pins out. Take the clips out. Just make note of how these pins actually go in or the clips I should say if you need to take a picture with your cell phone before you take it apart so you know how to put it back together the reason we're doing this is on the uh, this is actually the driver's side the passenger side is exactly the same but on the passenger side the caliper was actually stuck actually you guys saw that at the beginning of the video but uh, owner wants everything to match up so we'll be doing it even though I could just switch out the brake pads and put a new rotor in he wants it all to match up so I'm using power stop for this, using power stop rotors, power stop um, brake pads as well. Let me show you that real quick. I'll put links down in the description below where you guys can pick this up on Amazon, but there's the uh, power stop evolution carbon fiber ceramic performance pads. Comes with everything you need, comes with all the hardware, the grease, the clips, everything. This is an awesome little kit. We'll also be using a power stop cross drilled and slotted rotors. This is one of the best up brake upgrades you can do. If you're not doing this or anything else, the one thing I can suggest to you if you want to get better stopping power or if you want to stop quicker, go with a cross drilled and slotted rotor. Here's the new caliper we're using. This thing is amazing, powder, powder coated red. Just a great little, great little caliper. So on the uh, passenger side, here's the passenger side one. This little stud in here, there is no bolt. Actually just a stud that runs through here and uh it was it, this is actually seized in here i might make a video on how to get this unstuck uh, i could put a oxyacetylene torch to this and heat it up see if i could bang it out and reuse it obviously i would have to once that stud is exposed on this one i'd have to put it to a grind wheel and uh and clean it all up but yeah here's the old one here's a new one night and day difference all right got the brake pads out now i'm going to get the caliper out there's two 14 millimeter bolts I'll hold it on they're right back here I'm not gonna disconnect the brake line that's actually the last thing I do 
what I'll get, I'll get, a, I'll get a paint can. And once I get this caliper off, once I get the two 14 millimeter bolts out, I'll take this whole caliper off and I'll set it down in a paint can. A paint can seems to be the perfect height to uh, put the caliper on and not, you know, overextend the brake line. The caliper actually comes with the new hardware that you need to install the brake line onto the new caliper. There's actually two, or on the new on the new kit, there's two copper washers that you have to put on the banjo bolt. So keep that in mind. Do not install the brake caliper line without the two new washers. They're brass washers. On this one, when Lexus actually assembled this from the factory, you can see it right here. I'm touching it right there with my finger. There's a washer on this side and washer on that side. They're connected by this little, they're actually just connected together. So there's one on the outside, there's one on the inside. So do not install it. Do not install the line without a washer or this in place or you're gonna have a brake leak and you're gonna die, so. All right, we're here to the rotor. Um, to break this free, you can try to beat it off with a you know a sledgehammer or something, but um, to make it life easier and not beat yourself up, you need to get two bolts. These are M8 1.25 by 20, and they screw in. The rotor is actually designed with it. They have these holes so you can put these bolts in. Obviously, as you tighten these bolts down, it's going to push against the hub, and then it's going to push the rotor up and out. It's going to make a loud snapping sound. I don't know if these have ever been changed or not, but... Uh, I'll show you how you do this. So these are M8, 1.25 by 20. Or you can get longer ones, you know, 30, 25, whatever you guys want. Righty, tighty, lefty, loosey. Sometimes you need to go in there and back off the parking brake. There. So if you get this free and clear like this, if you hear the snap, but it's still not coming off, you need to go in here, pop this rubber cover off, get it at a, uh, no, what is it, 12, 6, 3, 3 o'clock position. You have a little wheel right here that actually retracts the parking brakes. I'm going to try to get off here. There we go, see? Voila, just like that. So that wheel right here, this is what I'm talking about. So you'd have to back this off which contracts the brake, uh, the parking brake shoes so you can get the uh, rotor off. Because sometimes on the inside of the rotor, there'll be a wear mark and it made a lip and the lip gets stuck on the parking brake shoe and you can't get it on or you can't get it off, I should say. Okay, so uh, that was easy. So that was fairly easy. Sometimes it's not that easy to get off. All right, you have some rust here on the hub. One thing you can do is go in there, get a wire wheel and then coat it with some anti-seize. That way when the new... Uh, Rotor goes into place. It doesn't doesn't seize itself up to the uh, hub. That's why we had to use the two bolts to get that rotor off. So I'll go ahead. I'll do that. Clean this up as best as I can, and then uh, put some anti seize. And I'll bring you back in when I'm installing the new uh, the new uh, rotor, cross drilled and slotted rotor. But yeah, if, like I said, if you can't get the old rotor off, if you break it free like that, you hear it snap, and then uh, it's still stuck on there as you're trying to get it off. You have to pop that little rubber cover off then uh, back off the parking brake shoes a little bit. Otherwise, you don't have to touch this at all. All right, got the hub cleaned up as well as I could. Put some anti-seize on there. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to spray the parking brake shoe down with some uh, brake cleaner, O'Reilly's brake parts cleaner. Always make sure you have like, a piece of cardboard or an old towel down here because when brake dust leukifies, it stains concrete. Don't ask me how I know that. All right, go ahead and ask me. Uh, the reason I know that is because all these years I've been doing brake jobs and making uh, brake dust liquefied, it, I know it stains concrete. Also, another thing to note, don't breathe this stuff in. So uh, as soon as you start spraying the brake parts cleaner, go ahead and hold your breath, all right? Just a little trick from Bundy's Garage if you don't want to get lung cancer, okay? So here we go. Try not to spray it on the hub where you just put the anti-seize on. Okay, just backing up so I can breathe. <laughs> and next thing I'll do, I'll get the uh, new rotor, cross drill and slider rotor. I will uh, spray that off with brake parts cleaner because they uh, ship from the factory with a little bit of oil coating so they don't rust. And I'll put it on. I'll hold it in place with a uh, with one of the lug nuts, and then I'll start putting everything back together again. Okay, bringing in the new rotor. 
Just make note. You want the hole. You want the hole right here on the new rotor to line up with one of the holes here so that in case you have to go back here and adjust these parking brakes, well, the next guy that does the job has access to the wheel back there. Okay, we're good there. Next thing I like to do, I'll bring in a lug nut, at the very bottom, power that down, so that it stays in place while I'm installing everything else. Just a trick of the trade. Okay, holds that into place while we're doing everything else. Now I'll bring in the uh, new caliper. Actually, let me transfer this the old rubber from the old rotor to the new one. Okay, that's in place. One thing I want to tell you guys, when you start working on the new brake pads and the new rotor and all this stuff, it's clean. Everything's, I don't want to say pristine, but everything's clean. Don't get your grimy paws onto the surface of the rotor on this side, on the back side. Or onto the new pads at all okay the pads will actually be one of the last things we install but don't 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 get the surface dirty all right I've seen lots of guys at shops at dealerships that'll just you know get their hands dirty with grease or whatever the case may be and they just start covering this and touching this and contaminating a new rotor which is an amateur move at best so don't do that all right here's a new part of the caliper this is part of the caliper so this actually sits on the back side of the knuckle this is where the two 14 millimeter bolts go into. This right here is a swing arm or a swing pin, you could say. And that part, this part of the caliper, actually just goes into here and slides. There's no bolt, there's no screw, there's nothing that holds it in. Okay, so one thing I want to do before I install this, I'm going to put, uh, or actually after I install it, I'm going to put some uh, brakes, brake caliper slide grease on this, okay? The product that I've had the best luck with is the Permatech Silicone Ceramic Extreme Brake Parts Lubricant. I'll put a link down in the description below to this where you guys can pick it up on Amazon and all the other stuff I've used in this video. I'll put links down in the description below. I'll put links down to other videos as well so you guys can save money in these hard economic times when gas is costing us $7 a gallon here in California. So thanks a lot, Biden. Okay, what you're looking at is that pin that the uh, other part of the caliper goes on to. So like I said, you just get a little Permatech silicone ceramic Brake parts lubricant. I'm just gonna coat this up. Just put a little dab. It's hollow, so you can actually put some in there too. This helps prevent it from getting stuck. All right. So the whole reason why we're doing this whole job is because the other side got stuck. So this step helps eliminate that. Okay. Then I have this here. You gonna see that? The other side of the caliper. Go ahead and get my little dabble do ya. Stick it in there. Get my little pinky in there. We'll bring this whole assembly on. It slides right into place. Alright. Okay, now we can put the top 17 millimeter bolt on. I'll put a little bit of uh, brake grease on that as well, which is right here. So I'll put it right here on the shank, right there. And then I'll bring in the uh, new brake pads. And then the last thing I do will be to connect the uh, the uh, brake line. We're almost done with this job. Have the caliper back in place. Have the rotor back in place. Have the brake pads in place. Have the new pins in place. Have the 17 millimeter uh, mounting nut or bolt, I should say. That's in place. Put some uh, caliper grease on that. The pins in place back here. Uh, last thing I'm going to do. So here's the here's the banjo bolt right on the old brake caliper that's a 14 millimeter you're going to break that loose i'm going to pinch it i'm going to hold it with my two fingers the actual brake line itself so i don't lose a whole lot of fluid and then i'm going to quickly as quickly quickly as i can i'm going to um, slide in a new copper washer there's two of them okay came with the kit one goes on the back one goes on the front and then uh tighten it down the new when you put this bolt into the new caliper, it might feel like it's getting tight on you as only hand start this, okay? Only hand start this banjo bolt. But as you start tightening it down, it's gonna get really tight on you and be like, what the heck? What's wrong with this? It's not, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with it. You just need a wrench 
to be able to tighten it all the way down and it will tighten it all the way down just make sure make sure make sure make sure you don't cross thread this because it'll be a pain in the ass if you cross thread it into a new caliper and you have to take this whole thing off and have it re-threaded or tap it out just do not cross thread it okay um i'll show you how i bleed this actually, i actually just tell you right now so once i have the new banjo bolt in place the washers in place everything's into the new caliper i'll crack this just a little bit for, for about five minutes i'll let as much air as i can come out on its own i'm not touching the brake pedal at all i'm just opening up the brake bleeder screw valve brake brake bleeder screw i should say i'm just opening that up and letting gravity do it the work and having just brake fluid come out just make sure you watch your brake fluid reservoir under the hood make sure that is full and not getting low because the last thing you want to do is have that run out of fluid while you're trying to bleed these brakes all right i'll bring you back in uh, after i transfer everything over just take your time um, when you screw in the banjo bolt onto the new caliper do not do not do not cross thread it one thing i forgot to point out where the banjo bolt goes into there's a little yellow cover so you got to take that off don't leave that in there <laughs> it'll never thread in thread on and uh, you'll be banging your head against the wall like what the heck so just make sure you take that off okay i have the banjo bolt here on the old one it's loose those things are on there pretty tight take your time this little hook right there there's actually a spot on the new caliper will that where that will go into and then i just the factory lexus uh washers i just toss that aside and use the new brass ones that came with the kit okay so i'll bring you back in as soon as uh, i get everything connected all right got everything in place so you can see the washer right there the inside one the outside one the banjo bolts in place um, you're gonna lose like i said you're gonna lose some brake fluid it's gonna come down and drip down on this hose so what i do i just get some brake cleaner and i wipe off this hose and i sit here and i let it and i watch it for a couple minutes Make sure I don't see any drips down here. That way you know everything's good to go. Okay, next thing I do, I'll get my 10 millimeter. This brake bleeder screw is a 10 millimeter. What you're gonna do, and what I was talking about, is just letting gravity do the work. So you're gonna crack this open, okay? Quarter of a turn, half of a turn. And you're gonna start seeing, uh, after a while, you know, a minute, minute, 30 seconds, you're gonna see some brake fluid start coming out of there. Like I said, I'll, I'll let that come out of there for about five minutes, maybe three, three to five minutes, and I'll close it off. Just make sure your reservoir is full on the front, in the hood, under the hood, and then uh, to bleed this, after you let gravity do the work, you're going to have somebody go in the uh, inside, press the brake pedal three or four times slowly, and there's no, there's no reason to rush it as you pump it. You don't want to cavitate the uh, brake fluid at all. Just push it three or four times slowly on the brake pedal. They're going to release it. As they, as you tell them to uh, push down the brake, you're going to crack this open. You're going to see air come out. And before, you're going to only crack it for like one second, 1.5 seconds. And then they're, they're going to, the, the brake pedal will bottom out on them. And you want this bleeder screw to be closed before the brake pedal bottoms out. Okay? Then you repeat the step. Have them press the brake twice slowly. And then they release it, and then you tell them to hit it, or you know, press it slowly. As they start pressing it slowly, you open this up again, keep it open one second, 1.5 seconds, until you see all the air come out and just fluid start coming out. So as you can see, from me just cracking it open, gravity is pushing fluid through this already. And then the final final thing is to uh, actually bleed the uh, brakes mechanically. So. I hope this has helped you out. I really do. If, uh, if it's helped you save money, please consider subscribing to my channel, Bunny's Garage. It really helps me and my family out. Um, I feel for everybody that's having problems with uh, the, the price of gas throughout the nation. Hopefully we can change things in November of 2024. And uh, if you can, subscribe. I'll put links down in the description below to more videos to help you guys save money. And like always, I'll keep them rolling for you.